What's up, Andrews? Peter Rumpy Andrew here. Hey, bought myself a barrel shroud. This one's from Kineticek. And I want to show it to you just because I actually had a bunch of questions. There's a website about how this particular shroud works. And I'm going to answer those initial questions. So couldn't find the answers online and just decided to pony up the money and order this sucker. So here it is. <clears throat> and actually what I did is I ordered the cap the barrel shroud tube, and then what they call the butt plug uh, separately. I mean, the, the butt plug thing is, it is what it is, but you can order different kind of cylinders here, the shrouds, and then you can order different caps. Now, in most cases, the cap is literally just a cap, and it just kind of tops off the shroud itself and is flush or nearly flush with the end of the barrel. And this is this is for a 223. It's a one half by 28 thread. But what I wasn't sure is like the Strike Industry shroud, if uh, the threading sits up sits close and does the does this break or comp a flash hider uh, protrude really far out and uh, are these holes in this particular one actually just for Aesthetics or do they actually work? So I wanted to point out a couple things here. First of all It comes in three pieces. Like I said this Plug here has two o-rings on it and fits in here. Everything is Appears to be aluminum this I Think might be that's a good question, but these are pretty light So you have this aluminum ring this gets pushed in here and this should snug over your you know, standard contour profile uh, barrel without a problem. And in my case, you're asking, why did I get this? Why would I get a shroud? You know, they're really for aesthetics only. Is because on my black AR, I have a stainless steel barrel and I just don't like kind of that stainless steel, everything being black and then you got this shiny piece sticking out the end. I just kind of wanted to cover that up. But I also wanted this particular shroud because it has obviously these, these long kind of M-lock looking, which they are not. Emla, just these cuts in here, and that's going to help vent out the heat that's going to uh, accumulate around the barrel on a shroud. So you know it's cool that there's they it kind of vents it out. Then you also have this knurled pattern on the bottom part of it, and you can see Kineticek in there. You know I like I, I I actually wouldn't mind it being smooth because it looks clean, but you can see the threading right in here, and that threading obviously the cap would go right in there. So regardless of what kind of cap you have, um, it's really the cap threads onto the end and then uh, you would uh, you would uh, install these two together first. There's a little o-ring to keep it in place, a little rubber o-ring there, and then you put it on the barrel and screw it down. Now what I do like about it is that the threading that goes over the end of your barrel is right here on the end. So this thing would um, sit right on the end of your barrel uh, and would become your muzzle. And so theoretically, the, the, the threading would probably end right about here. So everything from here forward is going to be extra length. Now, as I said, they seem to have some caps that are flush with the barrel, some that are a little bit of co little contour to kind of give you a concave or a convex end um, that might come out just a little bit more, but they're, they're just for design. The issue is, as you may have seen in a previous video, is I already have a barrel shroud that is flush with the end of my my uh, barrel. And what I don't like about it, I love the look, but one, you get a large report both in sound and a big fireball and flash. It's not that big of a deal during the day uh, because your pupils aren't dilated, uh, you know, like they would be at night. But at night, it's super visible. And then secondly, if you go to the range, and mostly indoor ranges for me, it's just kind of not being a very good neighbor when you have a big ball of fire, big flash, a lot of noise, and you know, you get the full recoil into your shoulder. Not a huge deal on 223, but what I wanted to do is just be a little more sensitive to the people shooting around me, as well as protecting my own eyes and, and try, trying to do what I can to minimize flash. So you can see here that there are all these little Swiss cheese holes on here. The ones drilled in the front are purely aesthetic. Uh, they, they are maybe a quarter inch deep there and they just stop. So they just look cool. And But what you can see there in the hole, 
And then there's kind of this drop down. So you actually have a little bit of like a, a square bell. So um, you're going to probably get some expansion of the, the flash coming out of there. But you do have a little bit of protection. But you can see inside you have holes visible on that little channel, which would basically be a barrel extension. And those holes actually do uh, coincide with the holes drilled here. So let me show you. So in lieu of really high tech equipment, I have a wooden match. And you can see here that I can put the wooden match in these holes and actually it, it, each of these holes goes into um, the channel there. So it doesn't matter if it's higher up, if it's lower, they all pass through. And even these um, actually will vent, as you can see, some of the, the gases out the side. Now, they don't seem to be, they all seem to be symmetrical. So they're not kind of an anti-rise pattern or anything like that. There's no timing on it. But what I think it will do, and my assumption and what I got it for is that, one, you're going to kind of uh, protect or shroud the flash as it's coming out with this bigger hole here, as well as kind of a, maybe a one inch um, length of additional, you know, barrel that's going to kind of vent uh, some of the flash out of these holes. In, in a very crude way, you're kind of venting out all of the, the noxious stuff on the barrel. Now, the cool thing is, despite it being really thick and fat, it appears to be no longer than a standard muzzle brake, an A2 birdcage or, or something like that. So hopefully you'll get all the effect of a flash hider, maybe even better than some, and you're going to kind of control that fireball that comes out the end. And still, when you put it all together, kind of have that nice clean barrel shroud look. Give the, the barrel a nice, you know, kind of fat look. Make it look like you're shooting a much bigger caliber than you are. Um, and I think it should be pretty good. Now, I will do a video showing some actual range results with it. And so you can judge how well it works. At that point, I want to just do give you a couple quick measurements. The outer diameter is 37.76 millimeters or 1.48 inches. And it's going to be a little hard to tell you here, but the total length of the shroud above the threading is 1.76 inches or 44.7 millimeters. Uh, there's a little threading, obviously a little shoulder here where the shroud itself joins on. And then oh, the overall length on this little bad boy, once it's all put together, is just about seven inches. So from where the threading would end, you're kind of getting probably about five inches. I think they say four and three quarter inches of barrel coverage. So hopefully that helps you when you're looking for a barrel shroud. This is the one from Kinetic Tech. I'm pretty excited about trying it out because not only do I think it gives me kind of the look I'm looking for, but it'll actually provide a little bit of uh, functional flash suppression. Peter Von Panda with the Kinetic Tech barrel shroud. Out!